back to the show that makes my wife go, ooh, you need a haircut. In just a few days, somebody's got a special day. Your mom. And to celebrate your mama, we have prepared a few things to say about her. Yo mama is so enjoyable. How enjoyable is she? She's like a hug wrapped in laughter in a magic show wrapped in a delicious chicken burrito. Oh. <laughs> Yo mama is like a sneeze. How is she How like, like a sneeze? sneeze? <laughs> God bless your mama. <laughs> Yo mama is like a table in a packed coffee shop. How is she like a packed coffee shop table? Uh, excuse me, <laughs> sorry to intrude, but do you mind if we share your mama? <laughs> Let me just scoot you in right here. <laughs> Yo mama's so loving. How loving is she? She's so loving that I wish she was my mom. Ow! I'm just kidding, mom. I love you. It's okay. Oh, Ricochet shot it too. <laughs> <laughs> Yo mama's so supportive of you and your efforts. Yo mama's so supportive of your efforts. Your efforts. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you were a successful individual. Oh! Yeah! Yo mama is so well read. How, How well read is she? She can teach a course of literature at an accredited university. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Yo mama is so considerate. How considerate is she? That during the seventh inning stretch, she sings Take Me Out to the Ball Game to both teams so that nobody feels left out. Yeah, oh, yes. Yo mama is like a cute and cuddly puppy. Yo, what kind of puppy that is cute and cuddly? Everybody wants to give her a hug. Oh. Yo mama is so wise. How wise is she? That Yoda calls her all the time asking for advice. Ah, Yo mama is so cute and cuddly. How cute and cuddly is she? Cats share pics of her. Oh. Yo mama's so nice. How nice is she? You should really learn to appreciate all the things she does for you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got way more serious on that one than I expected. Yo mama is so bossy. How bossy is she? She got promoted at her company way faster than anyone expected, had an early retirement, and then started her own company. Oh! <laughs> You're a boss. <laughs> so to all the moms we know out there, Mana, Sharon, Jill, Kim, Jenny, and Sherry, we wish you a very happy Mother's Day. to another week of the Cokesbury Student Ministry Show. We're so glad you're here, and we hope you have enjoyed the Cokesbury Student T-shirt day, but the day's not over. So if you haven't done it yet, put on your best Cokesbury Student swag, take a picture, put it on Instagram, tag us, we'd love to share it. But now that I have you here. Whoa, 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 let me tell you something, brother. I am tired of all this. Do you understand me? The stuck man, he just back. Do you see? I am here, and now I have the most exciting news besides WrestleMania 35. The Stuckman, hold on one second, ma'am. I'm trying to promote something here. The Stuckman is challenging the coronavirus this upcoming summer. Do you hear me, Cokesbury? You're challenging an invisible opponent? How do you feel about it? Ma'am, you do not just. Did you not just hear what I said? Maybe I need to explain it a little more to you here. Now, if we could cut to the footage to show this coronavirus, this pure, intense rage that it is bringing on. Of course I will wear a mask. Every brother out there is wearing a mask right now to fight this virus. Well, what, what's your motivation? You see, 
Every stuckomaniac out there has been affected by this virus. You see, I hear all of the cries, all of the sadness. It fuels my rage as I want to fight this virus for everything that it has done to the stuckomaniacs. Do you, what do you, do, do you think it'll work? Well, let me tell you something, brother. It's so crazy that it just might work. Well, you heard it here first, folks. It just might work. All right, this week's game is going to be the Whisper, Whisper Challenge. And so how we're going to play is I'm going to spotlight one of you guys. I'm going to send you a, um, a phrase. And then uh, you are going to, we're going to mute your audio. You're going to say the phrase. First person to guess um, gets to go next. What? <laughs> Keep it simple. I've got absolutely nothing. It's an S. And then... Yes. No? Keep the change and feel the animal. Just that last word. Keep the... Tip. There Keep it is. What? That was so an S. <laughs> no juice. How many words is it? Yeah. Four words. Four? Four? Four. 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 No shoes, it's no an... problem. No shoes, no service? No shoes, no service, no! No yeah. shoes, no service, there it is. Oh. Jacob! Okay. <laughs> Don't eat There's no place like home. <laughs> I knew I was afraid that one. <laughs> what? Man. <laughs> what? <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> It's a wonderful life. Man. One more time. To the chest. Cut to the chase. There it is. Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Throw us the dynamite. dynamite. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> danger. Stranger danger. <laughs> I demand an angel. No. Oh, what's the crap? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I demand an answer. Answer. Oh, you got it. There it is. <laughs> Turn. Turn. That. Oh, that. turn that frown upside down. Oh. <laughs> Float. Float like a butterfly. Sting like a bee. <laughs>What's up, Cokesbury students? You've already had plenty of jokes today, but we've got a few more and a meme in real life to share with you, but I'll get us started with the joke of the week. Why don't we tell secrets in a cornfield? Why not? Because there's too many ears. <laughs> oh, hey, corn, so, corn ball. Hey, so yeah. corny. So yeah. corny. Well, try to beat Very that, corny. I dare you. I, I, <laughs> we'll see. All right, guys, so this meme, I can't even preface this this week, so go ahead and pull up the meme right here. When you're cooking and the recipe says chill in the fridge for one hour, 
He is a literalist, my friends. He is committed to the culinary arts. Now, if we could bring up the meme in real life. Now, let me preface this. This hurt a lot. This is a small fridge. I am a large man. It hurt. <laughs> Uh, I fit my head into that shelf and I did not sleep right for about two nights after that. But very fun and also very cold. Remember, when the recipe says chill in the fridge, take it literally. Chill in the fridge. Well, how'd your recipe turn out? Oh, not good. Not good at all. Not good at all. It was a bust. It was a bust. <laughs> all right, well, that's that for the joke and the meme of the week. We'll see y'all next week. Hey, what's up guys? We are gonna wrap up our series on control today. And uh, so thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, over the last couple weeks, I've really kind of trusted you with this, uh, this thing about me and that, you know, I kind of like a little, little bit of order, you know, just things to be, things to be nice uh, and, and orderly and seem to make sense. And, uh, you know, it's a little weird. I know some of you have pointed that out. Thank you so much. Uh, I knew that, but look, look, that's fine. It's fine that it's weird. Like I'll own it. I'll own it that I like things to be in a certain way because like, I, that's not going anywhere. I can't change it. So I might as well embrace it and figure out, well, how can I use this weird thing to bring a little peace into my life? And so that's fine. We talk about control. These are a bunch of remotes. They're all arranged by size and height and pointed in the same direction. We can continue. I get it. That's weird. It's weird, but if you think that's weird, today we're gonna to talk about probably the weirdest dude in the Bible. If you've never heard about John the Baptist, here are some highlights about this guy. Weird, all right, ready? So his dad was an old man named Zechariah, and he was visited by an angel foretelling of, the, of John's birth and said to actually name him John. His mother, her name was Elizabeth, she was also old and considered unable to have children. Those are his parents, super old, Nobody thought they would ever have kids. So then the same angel actually made Zechariah go mute until John was born. Kind of weird. Uh, John was, quote, living in the wilderness. And then that was actually prophesied by Isaiah in the Old Testament. So Isaiah speaks of this man that comes from the wilderness. This was John. He was actually like foretold to come out of the woods and pre prepare the way for Jesus. Uh, John lived in the woods, yet he baptized people. And when he did that, huge crowds showed up. He would literally come out of the wilderness and people would come out of the woodwork. See what I did there? To be baptized as he's preaching to the crowds. Uh, we know that John wore clothes of camel hair, a leather belt, and he ate bugs. Kind of weird. A weird fashion combo. Weird to eat locusts dipped in honey. I've never tried that. Uh, when Jesus talked about this man to large crowds, and he would say John was the one that the scripture had, scriptures had promised. Jesus had never spoken about anyone else like this. And when he baptized Jesus, a voice actually came from heaven, and John said that he like, it descended like a dove, and he saw the Holy Spirit in that moment. There is a lot of stuff about John and John the Baptist is actually mentioned in all four Gospels and after re reading about him we can all agree that John was a weird dude. I mean he was, he was just odd. You know nothing about his story really seems what we would consider to be normal. You know John had to juggle his his parents telling him he was destined for greatness and that he was ordained by God and then the world was also saying that he was a madman that lived out in the woods. You know he had these two things going on at the same time. John the Baptist not only had to contend with differences in appearance, in diet, locusts if you recall, and parental expectations, but John also had a very specific and a very distinct calling on his life from God. You know, here's the funny thing about being labeled weird, is that very often that label changes from weird to something a little bit more thoughtful, you know, like pioneer or innovator. You know, sometimes instead of saying weird, we say words like eccentric or funky. You know, we really try to lighten it up. We'll use adjectives like peculiar or mysterious. You know, sometimes today it's tough being called weird. Uh, so as John the Baptist is transitioning from Zechariah and Elizabeth's boy to the guy preaching in the desert wearing camel hair, eating bugs, we might imagine, imagine there's a heavy burden 
uh, to pave the pathway for Jesus. Because remember, like this is John's calling on his life is to make way for Jesus. And I can imagine that was a very heavy burden. So John, the king of all the misfits, surely had to wonder, is anyone really going to get me? Will I be understood as as I am? Is, is what I, does that disqualify me from sounding like I know what I'm talking about or being reputable or being someone that people would listen to? If we look a little bit closer in some of the scriptures, here's how the people responded to John the Baptist. In Luke 3, 7, it says, when the crowds came to John for baptism. In Luke 3, 21, 22, one day when the crowds were being baptized, John 1, then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. That was when he baptized Jesus right there. And then in John 3, at this time, John the Baptist was baptizing at Eonan and Salim because there was plenty of water there and people kept coming to him for baptism. We can just read in these four passages that even though John was this madman living out in the woods and he was this weird dude, God still used him not to just positively influence a couple of people, but massive crowds were coming to be baptized and to proclaim that they were now believers and followers of Jesus. God took this guy, this weirdo from out in the wilderness that ate bugs and wore camel hair and a leather belt and did tremendous things, literally to prepare the way for Jesus. It appears that God in his mercy answered the question, will anyone understand me? And he did it through John and he did it with groups of people and he did it in this magnificent way. You know, John was weird, absolutely no doubt about it. And if we look around, we're all weird in some way and maybe we can't see it from the outside, but we're all created unique, different, weird. And that's actually, a good thing like I mean look at the weirdos that are with me now no seriously come here and look at them weirdo in like the best way possible you look tremendous by the way happy Mother's Day there you go all right that's not it the freak show continues come here look at this guy weirdo that mustache is a million bucks though. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. Happy to see you. Hey, <laughs> I'm not done. We have one more. And maybe this is, he's definitely the loudest of all of them. But like, I'm telling you, look at this weird kid. I can't, I didn't tell him to do that. He just <laughs> did it. That's how weird, okay. Thank you. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, we are all different, we are all unique, and we are all valuable. And I am so thankful for the three of those weirdos because I also am weird. Like this was like a, a, a quirk or whatever. <sighs> Dude, it's just weird, okay? We're, we can trust each other. This is a safe place that all four of us together, I think God is using us in different and unique ways. And for that, I say, God, thank you for allowing our weird to come together in this way that I can't understand and hopefully we can just continue to love people and to love Jesus in the way that he created us to be. You know, my hope for all of us is that we let go of this idea that weird somehow disqualifies us from love or acceptance or grace. My hope is that we stop trying to control everything, that we just let go a little bit to let God come in and just embrace the idea that maybe God can take what is weird and use it to be wonderful. My hope for you is that you just embrace who you are, who God created you to be, which by the way, is incredible, loving, and beautiful. And just be with that.
I've been told to be ashamed. Lord, I've been told don't measure up. Lord, I've been told I'm not good enough. But you hear. Child in you, come find me in the dust. See no man of untruths can separate us. Can I reach out? Hi, we want to thank you uh, for staying with us. Special thanks to Dina uh, for the, bringing the song this week. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are out there. But just want, we want to leave you with one quick thing that, uh, you know, your life is not about changing who you are so that God will find you acceptable or lovable or worthy. That, that's not what your life is about. It's about embracing who God created and getting to know Him. You know, Jesus didn't come and say, hey, if you fit into this box, we can have a conversation. Jesus simply just said, follow me. And when Jesus uttered those famous two words, he was on a beach talking to fishermen. He was talking to tax collectors. He was talking to theologians. He was talking to doctors. He was talking to sick people. He was talking to friends. He was talking to enemies. And I bet somewhere along the way, Jesus whispered, follow me. To some weirdos. I think he's whispered that to each and every one of us. And now it's our decision to let go and to follow him. My hope is that we choose that in 2020. Be well.